Welcome at E2E Designs. Have you ever used these markers to highlight the branding of your tires to make them look like cool racing tires? Like the fat NASCAR tires with the Goodyear logo on? Or a Michelin tire on a super sports car? Yes, you tried. And what happened? Yeah, bullshit. After the first car wash or bike wash, your tires look like rubbish. These colors won't last long. The color in these markers won't stick. They are senseless and won't work. I tried a lot of things during the last years, even spray cans and guess what happened? They won't work, <laughs> won't work as well. Yeah, I tried also stickers, stick them on, the stickers won't stick on the rubber. Yeah, all this shit, it won't work. But today is the day and I show you how to create tire decals which last long, which are professional, but made at home with some simple tools. And yeah, it's for all of you, it doesn't matter if you are a car guy, if you love white tires like these, I like my tires as fat as my girlfriend's butt. <laughs> or if you are a mountain bike guy shredding the trails. Or if you are addicted to two-stroke motocross sounds. <laughs> yeah, enough of all these jokes. Let's dive right into the project. I show you step by step what you have to do and which material you have to use. I'll link you some of the material underneath the video in the description. So scroll down underneath the video if you want to use the material I use. And yeah, guess what? I'm not an idiot. I tried the stuff I used at first on the inner tube and check this. That's the decal I did and you can't peel it off. You can't scratch it even with the fingernails. It's so durable. And the trick is that's rubber as well. It's liquid rubber what I used. And yeah, you can scratch it. You can stretch it, doesn't matter. Use your fingernails and yeah, that's the perfect stuff. That's what we use. But at first we have to do the preparation. And yeah, when you do preparation, you have to wear some rubber gloves because we work with nitro thinner. And yeah, nitro thinner is a nasty stuff. So safety first, save your hands and your fingers, put some rubber gloves on. And the first thing we have to do is we have to clean the tire. And yeah, first step is use nitro thinner. Find the thinner underneath the video in the description. Use a paper towel. And now we have to clean the tire or the areas where we like to place the logos as, as good as possible. So clean them with nitro thinner, clean your tires. And here, yeah, that is what happened. Your tire should be black. And when that happened, you know that the tire is cleaned as much as possible and prepared for the next step. The next and important question is where can we find the decals and the data for the decals and which graphic software to use to create them? A lot of you asked me that question, so let's do it together. I'd like to show you my workflow on the example of the Maxis logo I showed you in the thumbnail. And the first good tip is visit the company's website and in some cases you can find the data there. So what we have to do is we have to open a browser, type in Google and search for the international Maxis website. So let's do that. I need the international site. Let's type in maxis.com. Here it is. Click on the website. And on most of these websites, the company logo is in the upper left corner. Here you can find it. Click on the logo, right click, open it in a new tab. And here you have it, the Maxis logo. And that's not a picture. These are not pixels. That's an SVG file, a vector file, exactly what we need. We have it already here. And the only thing we have to do is right click again and we have to save it on our device, on our computer. That's what I have to do is, I already saved it. So I have to save it again. And yeah, that's what we have to do. And now we have to open the graphic software and what I'm using is Adobe Illustrator. That's the graphic software of my choice. But you can use every graphic software which can handle vector files like these SVG files in this case. So yeah, search for a graphic software you like or use Adobe Illustrator. So let's open it and I'd like to show you how to create the data. Yeah, let's open the SVG file we saved on our computer. And here it is, the Maxis logo. And yeah, that's not the picture. Let's remove the color and you can see it. And yeah, you can see all these lines and that's a vector file. And that's exactly what we need for the sign maker. You have these paths on every of these letters and these paths is the cut path for the sign maker. But we have one big problem. That's a straight logo. We have no curves and now we need a curved logo. And I created another file. And what I did is 
I created some circles with the circumference of the tire and the only thing you have to do is arrange every of these letters on the scope of the tire like so and you have the data for our cut file. But I don't like to cut the Maxis logo. What I like to create and like to print on my tire is a little slogan I created. Go hard and shred them all. That's what I like on my tire. Here it is. I printed it already. So the only thing I have to do is I have to copy it. I have to open a new file. Open my cut software. I use a Roland cutter. So that's the cut software. It works with Adobe Illustrator. Now I have to uh, click on print and that's all I have to do. Yeah, let's cut some vinyl. That's a leftover from one of my last jobs. The color doesn't matter. It can be hot pink as my panties. And what I'm using is the Oracle 651 series. So let's cut a stripe of this foil and let's do the stencils. And it's also absolutely okay if you don't have a big sign maker like this. You can start with a smaller one like these circuit ones or cameos. I will link you these smaller sign makers in the video description underneath the video so you can order one yourself. They start at 80 bucks or 100 bucks. That's also fine for these small decals, for tire decals. You don't have to invest much or you can just go with a brush if you don't want to invest money. So if you want to go brush style, stay tuned and check in when I apply color. That's for you if you want to go the stencil way. That's what we have to do. Cutting the foil with a sign maker, even with a cheaper one. So check the links in the description and you find also cheaper material. Yeah, the next step is picking a knife and harvesting all the letters. Yeah, and when you are successful with the application of the stickers, you have to use some masking tape or painter's tape and you have to mask a bigger area around your stickers. But please don't touch the stickers with your bare hands because you have grease on your fingers and you can transfer it onto the sticker and that's what we don't want. So yeah, use rubber gloves, but it's a nightmare using this tape because the tape sticks on the gloves and you can't stick it onto the rim. So use the tape with bare fingers, but please don't touch the sticker, okay? Let's talk about the tools we need to apply the color. And as mentioned before, there are two ways to do it. The cheap way with a simple brush or the bit more professional way with an airbrush. And there are also two obvious reasons to choose the airbrush over the brush. And the first one is the airbrush is not as expensive as you thought it would be. A simple kit starts at 70 bucks. You can find some underneath the video in the video description. It comes with a small compressor and a simple airbrush which is more than enough if you want to apply these logos and these decals. The only thing you have to keep in mind, you can use the cheap brush, but make sure you have the right needle nozzle combination, which is 0.5 and minimum. If you have a smaller needle, the color won't flow in the airbrush and it won't work. So 0.5, you're good to go. That's what you have to buy. If you want to go the cheap way, it's also fine if you use a brush. You have to, don't have to buy any sign maker, any expensive airbrushes. You can do all by hand using a simple brush, but make sure you don't have a shaken hand. It won't work as well. And if you want to go with the masking and the brush, there's a high risk that the color flows underneath the masking tape and the vinyl and it looks shitty. So yeah, that's the risk. If you go with the brush, I recommend the airbrush because that's the most professional way you can go at home. That's what we want to do. Now we have to mix the color that it flows into these airbrushes. Um, that's the next step. Let's go. Now it gets really interesting because I like to show you how to mix the color. 
But the bad news are I couldn't link you exactly this color because I buy it offline at the local shop. So I linked you some color which is nearly this. It's a screen print color, a plastisol, which is also fine. Find it underneath the video in the description. Yeah, and to all the computer kids out there, the offline world is the world behind your 40 inch screen where sausages taste like meat and girls smell like teen spirit. And the good news are in this world, you can come as you are, just ask Kurt, he knows what I'm talking about. And you can find color like this. And if you don't have it, use the one underneath the video. It's also fine. And yeah, what I'm using is this cream print color, a two component cream print color, which is a ZE, that's what we need. A ZE color or a TE is also fine. And as mentioned before, it's two component, the color itself, the hardener, and we need also a thinner. That's very important. If you don't have it, the color won't work in these airbrushes because we need a liquid like milk. That's what we have to produce. So stay tuned. I'll show you the correct mixing ratios and what you have to do. The mixing ratio of the screen print color is 10 to 1. That means we need 10% of hardener and we don't need much color. Maximum 3 gram for these two little logos. So what I'm doing is I'm stirring the color with a wooden stick like so. And then I level my scale and add some of the screen print color. Not too much, we don't need much. That's four gram, more than enough for what we like to do. And now I have to add 0 0.4 gram of the hardener. I'm using a pipette because that's easy. I have to level the scale again. I have to add the hardener. And now we have to add thinner. And what we have to do is we have to create milk. So I have four gram of color and what I'm doing is I'm starting with two gram of the thinner. So mixing ratio nearly 50-50. Now I have to stir it until I have the milk and then I have to filter it and I can fill it in the spray gun. Yes, and finally it's time to spray the color. But keep in mind, these colors are serious stuff. So please buy yourself a proper spray mask and wear it when spraying these colors. So I like to tell you what I will do. Then I will put my spray mask and I will do it. I will do thin layers, a first thin layer, not the full range. Don't spit too much color on the tire. Do thin layers, maybe three to four thin layers. It's much better than one thick one. If you do so, the color can leak underneath the tape. That's what we don't want, so thin layers with a delay of maybe five minutes in between. That's what we are doing. Let's put on the mask and let's start. Yes, I sprayed four layers of the color, but don't remove the decals yet. This color has to cure for minimum 12 hours by room temperature, so I leave it overnight. Fully cured and come back tomorrow to show you the result. What I do now is I remove only the masking tape around my decals, clean the tiny a little bit if I have some overspray, and that's it. Don't remove the decals. It would be a huge mess. You have to do it tomorrow, so you have to be patient and you have to wait until the color is cured and yeah, the result will be much better if you wait and that's what you have to do. Yeah, one day later at my paint shop, let's check the decals. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's it. Now it's time to go hard and to shred them all. Thanks for watching. Have fun painting your own tart decals and see you in one of my next videos. Goodbye.